years, my husband Jerry, it's Jerry with a J, J-E-R-R-Y, my husband Jerry and I, we were considered just an institution here in Shad. Well, actually it may be that people probably should be institutionalized, but it was something like that. Anyway, we certainly enjoyed our 20 years here in Shad, and community involvement was always very important to me. I was very proud to serve on the Chatham Library Board, and I was thrilled to begin to bring murder, the library murder mystery plays to Chatham. But when it came time to retire, Jerry and I decided to move someplace normal. You know, like normal Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> and so when uh, Linda Meyer said that the library was going to have a fundraiser, you know, for the uh, sixth annual murder mystery play. Well, I was just more than thrilled to hop on my bike and come down here. <laughs> I hope that none of you are disappointed that uh, there's no play here this year. But at least you're here to see some friends, old friends, and maybe some new friends, and maybe some people that aren't so old. Besides, it really is more fun just to be here and have a party and stop all that bloodshed and all that killing. So, and enjoy the free food. Well, actually, I was kind of surprised to find out how much the food cost. I think $50 for my ticket here. But I, was so, I turned to Jerry and said, Jerry, what is this? Is this a local epic fundraiser? <laughs> <laughs> but Linda told me it was for charity and that all the money that we received we used to purchase books. And I said to her, Linda, you're still using that old excuse? Well, we started that when I was doing murder mysteries. Actually, we never did buy the books that we said they were going to. Mm -hmm. I suppose I wasn't supposed to say that, wasn't I? Oh, well. Anyway, it certainly is good to visit old friends once more. I feel like we're home again. Right, Jerry? Right, Jerry. Right. right. <laughs> it's great to be back in Chatham again. It's like finding an old shoe. You know it's going to fit. I need one good smell. <laughs> Leaving Chatham wasn't easy. You know, I I can remember back that uh, the town trustees they were really divided on the issue of zoning on how high the party sign was going to be in this deadline. That was the biggest thing in Chatham at that time. Now Chatham has their fast food restaurant imaginable. Why you saw a restaurant the other day was at Angus Burgers. And I remember when you couldn't find a place bark bark down by Fat Willie's. Fat Willie's down there, right? Right? Being a retired teacher, I did what I could to help out Chatham and, and the library and the fundraising efforts by taking part in these murder mystery plays. Well, I remember one year I got to play detective. And then another year I got to play detective again. And you guessed it the third year, detective again. You think I'm typecast or something? <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm the only one that's got a trench coat. <laughs> I wouldn't mind being typecast, but I heard that after I left, they made a detective some Ditsy Dane, I think she was just two inch five short of a head. <laughs> well, at least I haven't been as badly typecast as Cassie. Right, Cassie? Yes, Jerry, okay? I kind of play characters completely different from my personality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one year, let's see, I played this macho newspaper reporter. Oh, I was the murderer that year. Oh, another year I played. Plain Jane, a single matron, of the kill murder that year. Let's see, then I played Charity Drive. Charity Drive, another managed character, murderer. And then I played, oh, let's see, oh, director. Director, I wasn't the murderer that year. And then I played Deductible, the power-hungry pharmacist. Yeah, you know what? What's stupid who writes these things? Let's think that I'm some kind of lesbian killer or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm the woman I'm supposed to warn you about. You see, as a realtor, when I sell a home, the first room that I usually start with is the bedroom. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I once sold a million dollar home to a gentleman who only saw the house from the driveway in the back seat of the car. <laughs> no, I can't help it. Oh, I just sit here and I watch. 
finally came so I could see the Atrix, who, by the way, are true village treasures. And just like treasures, it's kind of a miracle that they haven't been buried by now. <laughs> we don't know that they're very old, okay? I just can't believe it. You know what? I'm done. I need to get out of here because that tipsy time is going to be coming this way. And she's going to be bragging. Oh, yeah. Oh. How she's been the alluring actress in all of these plays. <laughs> oh, Kathy. You shouldn't be so jealous. Why, everybody knows you're the glue that holds these plays together. Uh-huh. And you know, it's only fitting that you're the glue since you're just like an old nag who's been put out to pasture. <laughs> oh, it's just great to see all you wonderful people again who supported the murder mystery plays all these years. You know, when I heard they were going to have a reunion party, I thought they would probably be reprising some of their favorite characters. So, I told Stu Bed, I want to be Ed and Nicole Smith. <laughs> you know, a part I'm perfectly suited for. And the old fool said no. He said, I couldn't be Ed and Nicole because I, she wasn't one of his characters. Oh, that Ed. You know, he just walks around here like he owns the place. Just because once he was library board president, he just walks around here like he thinks he owns this place. You know, if he was so darn important, you would have thought that he would have ran for something a little more prestigious. Like, oh, I don't know, Chatham Poison Hotline Control President. Instead of walking around here like he just thinks he owns this place. Oh, he just thinks he owns this place. But, well, anyway, I'm really confused. Anyway, he thinks he just owns this place. Where was I? Hmm. Yeah, he thinks he just, oh, you know what? I really shouldn't complain. Oh, no, it's a much better idea than doing a play. At least for once, I don't have to be mesmerizing all those lines. <laughs> you know, I would just like to make a toast to the Chatham Library, you know? May you always have hope and stuff like that. <laughs> and may people always want to be reading because without reading, well, there would just be books. And there wouldn't be no books because then there'd just words and there wouldn't be any place to put them. Oh, and so I'd like to make a toast to the citizens of Chatham. May you always be citizens until you no longer are. <laughs> and finally, to the citizens of Chatham, <laughs> may you always be reading. I just 
just remind them that I teach in shadow. So it doesn't really matter what I do now. <laughs> Nobody notices anyway. So when I'm in his shadow, I just scooch over a few inches and I can see again. <laughs> he used to be a high school principal and a teacher, just like the Atrics. In fact, Jerry Atrick was my teacher, my inspiration for going into teaching. I figured if Mr. Atrick can teach, Certainly, I can do that, too. So I apologize again for taking up so much of your time. I really don't like being in settings where I attract attention to myself. I really don't like parties. In fact, okay, I really don't. So I'd appreciate it if you if you don't talk to me at all. <laughs> if you see me in the buffet line or, or getting something to drink, I would really appreciate it if you would just walk on by <laughs> and leave me alone. <laughs> To be honest, I've heard that the last few plays without me have been pretty amateurish. In fact, I heard that the clues kept getting easier, the dialogue was The only reason they keep doing the plays is because the library bought the complete series of Harry Potter books. <laughs> and they're just trying to cost justify that decision. But really, I need to think for making me a household name in this town. Why, people still come up to me and say, look, it's clearly in charge. But wait a minute. I think about it. They're clearly in charge here. It wasn't his idea, but mine. Now, I guess I don't need to thank Stu Kent for anything. In fact, he's just some two-bit hat writer who thinks he's Chatham's answer to Shakespeare. But in fact, he doesn't even live in Chatham. Who keeps inviting him back? Well, forget about him, because it's clearly in charge now. <laughs> they 
Thank y'all. <laughs> sure is mighty nice to, to meet you. <laughs> I've I never seen so many people before. <laughs> makes the body nervous to know that y'all came to show your appreciation for all that library play acting stuff you've been seeing all these years. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude or nothing. I'm a woman, but forgive my manners. My name's Stu. Stu Head. <laughs> you probably already know me as seeing the guy son writing these things for the library all these years. You know, I thought that'd be pretty easy. I'd have been done case be easy. I would been good with words and stuff like that. Hey, it's been hard. Trying to figure out who doesn't bend me and the bad guy each time. I just it just done stumped me more than a lot most of the time. But all I done really is I watched TV. I wrote down what happened on that show, Quincy. I showed you like that, Quincy. How messy he is, the Felix. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I done the first time. I just wrote down what happened. And then, then he came back and wrote another one. So I just, I just didn't change the name. Did it again. And again. And again, <laughs> still here we are here six party times later. You know, I don't mind doing this play acting stuff. It gives me a chance to see that pretty cat, you know. She's quite a fine lady. And I like that tipsy. <laughs> He's just a harlot. <laughs> She's kind of scary. <laughs> I sure do. He yells at all the bad people. He ain't a scared of no one. I like the cat. I, I think I'm going to ask her to marry me. I like the cat. So now when that deliverance meets force go, I mean, that really touches your heart right here, doesn't it? Oh, hi, by the way. I'm fat or cold. Just like Dr. Clearly here, I've been absent the last few plays. But I was sure glad that we had this reunion and I could come back and just get together with all my long-term friends and talk with everybody that I know and relate to John and stuff. Even you people here today. But, you know, I thought I'd enjoy return. I was going to sit in a big old easy chair, look out the window. Overlooks yes, the mighty crystal clear waters of the mighty Stang Mountain River. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm really glad to see that my son Al is picking up where I left off. You know, I really worry about that boy. I really do. They're just not quite right in the head. I think that's his mother's side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought that for him to be in these places, he'd be a little bit more moral. But, I guess that was a pretty a stupid assumption on my part, wasn't it? I mean, since when has the library ever been associated with anything that's normal? Where else are your tax dollars used to download this Fort Illustrated Swiss edition? <laughs> Except the state or Glenwood High School? <laughs> no, uh, anyway. Quite frankly, you know, I'm really surprised they didn't make it come and be in all the plays that I missed. I, <clears throat> they just keep asking me back. I've been trying to get out of these plays for years. And then Lynn Meyer threatens to double my fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one year, you know, <clears throat> they know I've got many questions, and what do they do? Oh, they just keep asking me back. I go for him. So what do they do? They write a party with a cane. I mean, sheesh, I'm still going through therapy for that. But then I had heart surgery. What do they do? They make me come back. I mean, 
I'm still in recovery. Right? I mean, what's a guy got to do? Get out of being one of these places.
might want to write 75 miles of fundraising that's done a little more than we did. And it was busy for six years. I could have just sent an email to the library congratulating them and saved a whole lot of money. And it's pretty much been less deadly. You know, when we first had the idea of doing murder mysteries, I had something really grand in mind, you know, like murder on the Orient Express. So what did we get? We got Stu Ted's notion of murder at the murder mystery place. Well, I tell you, I've seen better flocks than Scooby Doo. <laughs> you know, the truth is, we didn't just move to normal because we had to flee there. We had to flee there. Uh, I was run out of town by the library board. <laughs> <laughs> they said these fundraisers were giving the town a bad name. <laughs> As if in any town where Tom Gray is in there, it would be easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss my old friends so much. I was really looking forward to visiting them. And now we're going to have to spend our time caught up in a double murder investigation. Let's be honest, no one ever intentionally died here at the library. <laughs> but Gene Scott, who's a former trustee, <laughs> ran into two pairs of pitchforks. <laughs> ran into it ten times. <laughs> Either. Do you believe this? I mean, most men can't resist my alert. 
ready to blame someone else. With all these accusations, we're going to be for me. <laughs> but let's just take a minute and calm down and take a look at things logically. What do we have? Two murder victims? Okay, at a school board meeting, that's no big deal. But at the library, well, that's no big deal either. But take a look at the location of the body. Draw a straight line from one body to the other, and then go to the midpoints of the two bodies. Now, if we draw a diagonal line from the midpoint to the uh, audience, <coughs> you know, forensic science states that the murderer is often the person closest to the victim. Ladies and gentlemen, I think. We have found the murderer. Tell me, sir. <laughs> uh, where were you when the victim was alive? That's one of the weakest alibis I've ever heard. <laughs> Yeah, 
talk a little. Because you just never know when 
You go up and die, and there ain't no Quincy around to figure out who's done it to you. Thank you. 
with the mark, and they took my wine glass.
has been killed in each act of the play. Okay, in the first act, two people were killed, but the first one must have been for practice. Now, the, uh, the fourth victim, or the fourth act, uh, the <laughs> the, uh, the fourth act victim uh, has died, uh, but the rest of us are hey, uh I know it's not me because it's uh, only a question of time before they beg me to be in the plays again, so now I'll just <laughs> take over the investigation. Yes, it's Clearly in charge. <laughs> more and more people are dying who aren't related to me. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> well, I couldn't possibly be the killer, could I? Of course I knew about the insurance policy taken out by Dad and Sarah. I was the one who encouraged them to do it. But I didn't kill them because of it. Well, actually, I didn't have a chance. <laughs> Somebody beat you to it. But I thanked him just to say. <laughs> <laughs> just because I wanted to kill him, that doesn't make me a murderer. Am I right? Am I right?
one crummy line. I was humiliated, so I sent the script to Steve Ted every year. I manipulated the plays. After six years, I just didn't take it anymore. So I decided to kill them all. It was easy, really. <laughs> Jerry Sumak-Sahumski. 